Hello again. Now that we know how to implement conditionals and loops in assembly, let's see how we implement a little more complex control structure here. Uh, we talk, we're going to talk about um, switch statements. And the way switch statements work in C is as follows. Here I have an example here. If I say um, switch X, now what I'm saying is that now there'll be a bunch of options that depending on the value of X, I'm going to execute a different piece of code. Okay? So here in our example, if X happens to be set to 1, I'm going to execute this piece of code here. And then this break statement just says that this piece of code is going to be executed, and then we're going to stop and continue executing past the end of the switch statement. There's some other cases called uh, fall-through cases that do not have a break statement. For example, if um, X has happened to be set to 2, this uh, piece of code is going to be executed and it's going to continue executing through the next block until it sees the next break statement. Then this goes jumps it out of the uh, switch and, and, and continues executing. Okay? And also, if you have any missing uh, value in a set of cases, for example, if x happens to be set to 4, since there's no, val no case for 4 here, what gets executed is a default value. So it, it, the default block of code. So the way to think about the default is that if, there's any, if it, the value that you're switching on is not uh, in any of the cases, you execute the default case. And uh, wh why you could implement this with uh, branch instructions that we, that we saw early, earlier, um, it gets really complicated quickly. So another way of, of implementing this is using what we call a jump table. And a jump table works as follows. Say here we have our example, um, we have an example of a switch statement. Now we're going to have a table that has um, roughly as many entries as the number of Ks in our, in our switch statement, the number of cases in our switch statement. Okay? And now in each one of these entries in the table points to the address of a code block, which is cor corresponds to the code block that has to be executed based on the case value. So for example, if our uh, x happens to be val1, um, we're going to jump, we're going to look at the jump table, get the corresponding address and say like oh, the start one and that's the code we're going to execute. We're going to execute this piece of code here. Um, now one way to think about this is the following. You could have a variable called target which holds the target address for a given option. We're going to look up our jump table which is just an array of instruction addresses. We're going to index that array with x and we're going to um, get the value starting target and we're going to jump on it. We're going to do a go to and use that as an instruction address and go to and do a jump to that address. Go to that address. So here's another way of looking at this more visually. Um, I have another switch statement. And for each one of the cases, I have the corresponding region of memory. Just do the color matching there. And then our jump table is going to map back to the corresponding um, to the corresponding memory region that implements that block of code corresponding to the to the case statement. So now one is green, so that means that the entry one here has to point to green. That's this one. And sa same thing for orange and so on. Okay? Now note there's an interesting case here, which is the default case. The default case, as I said before, gets executed if none of the value if the value of X hap doesn't happen to happens to be none of the values explicitly defined by cases. Okay, so here, uh, if it happens to be zero, right, we're going to jump to the default case. And also it happens to be uh, four, we're going to jump to the default case. Okay? Um, and we can use a jump table as long as the value is lower than six. For any other value that's greater than six, we're going to execute the default code, the, the default block. Um, now this jump table is just a list of addresses, and here's how it gets set up. Um, in, in assembly, you'd see a declaration of a long word that, point, that happens to be the same value as the label that maps to the address of the code block. Okay? So um, now this, for example, if we take .l61, and that's where the default code block starts, so the corresponding instruction address is going to be stored here, and same thing for the other uh, case values. So let's see how we use this table in assembly now. 
Um, so here we have the jump table. And what we're going to do is we're going to, depending on the value of x, which is loaded in edx here, we're going to uh, find the corresponding entry. And the way this is done, this is done using a um, indirect jump. The indirect jump says that instead of jumping to a specific address, it jumps to an address contained in an address. So the way this is working is this dot L62 here is the base address of our uh, jump table. Now the value of EDX gets multiplied by 4 and added to that. So it's multiplied by 4 because a long word is 4 bytes. So if EDX is, say, 4, we're going to add 0. We're going to add 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's the value that's going to be uh, jumped to. Okay. So uh, another thing to note here is that we are comparing it whether x happens to be greater than 6. And if it is greater than 6, it jumps straight to default. Okay. So now let's, let's see how the code blocks are implemented. So um, here, suppose that we have, uh, we're interested in case 2 here. And case 2 happens to be mapped to uh, label.l57. It means that this is where the assembly code that implements um, the block for case 2 is located. So we have a division here, so that's why we must have a division instruction here. And note that this, that this is a fall-through case, so it's going to be, in case x is 2, it's going to be executing, and it's going to continue executing through the next case block here until the, the break statement. And the break statement here is implemented by essentially just finishing the execution, returning from the function in which the switch block is inserted. Okay. And note here that the default case also, after this, there is a return. So uh, if you look at here in uh, label.l61, dot, dot we're going to see here that uh, after, right after being done with the corresponding code block, we also leave and return from the function. So here's the, the rest of the code block for uh, our example. Um, again, you see the, the important thing to notice here is that you have uh, returns after every single block that had breaks. And for both case 5 and case, and, and case 6, they're both mapped to .l60, which is that label here. So let's see how these um, labels are defined now. If you look at the object code, they, you see that they become an instruction address, like I mentioned before, that's chosen by the linker. Okay? And there'll be one of those for each one of the, the case values in our switch statement. So if you go look at the entire table, you see that there'll be one address per um, case statement. And those um, have to, as we saw before, put points at a code block. So now we can look at in each one of those, you see, map to a block of code corresponding to the code inserted in the in the case block for that value. Um, so here's our, our, our list of instruction addresses for the jump table, and each one of them points to a block of code. And note that we have some repeated ones. Remember that some some of the cases that had, for example, fall through or cases that are not defined. So in this case here is it, it's the default value for for uh, value four. If you remember, was it, it has to go through um, to the default case, so it points there. And the same thing for value zero. Now let me ask you a question: uh, Would you implement this one with a jump table? Well, look at the size of this value here. Probably not. This table will be very, very, very large. Okay. So jump um, jump tables are, are are used normally when you have few um, case values and you can build uh, a small table for it. In this case here, it would be much more efficient to just implement this uh, with branch instructions. So now we conclude our x86 assembly programming section, and I'll see you next time.